All right, it's working. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Good morning. <coughs> or afternoon. Or evening. Uh, welcome back to some more Let's Play Under Rail. In the last episode, we talked with the principal investigators of the physics and chemistry departments within the Institute of Chort, gaining quests for them to prove that we are worthy of joining investigation, should we desire to do so. But then, in proper Tim's style, we ignored it, kind of, and have headed down to do the preservation quest instead, which is to explore this exposed research facility, which had been revealed during the earthquake that the tu uh, tunnelers, or faceless, had caused. And so here we are. We slaughtered a bunch of lunatics. We didn't die, which is surprising to me. <laughs> and now, here we are. So, um, about to walk <coughs> over to the right in order <coughs> in order to kill some, some mutants. I think there's mutants over here. If I recall correctly, there's mutants over here. So I guess we'll find out together if there are indeed still mutants. Right, but we're gonna... We're going to chat for a bit before we do this, and I feel like we should probably do the summary of Lottery as well, because it's been a while. So if you don't care about that stuff, this video will be segmented into different, well, segments. So you can skip ahead to what you want to listen to, in case you don't want to listen to me talk for a little bit. I got some real-life stuff to talk with you guys about, about how I'm doing uh, with cancer treatments and my health so far. Lost Fremen left me a comment I'd like to talk about for a bit because I like getting some feedback on how I'm doing and I think that's it so let's go ahead and and start this and we'll start with the summary it's, it's been a hot minute since we've done this oh and it's been also about five days since I last recorded the game I'll, I'll talk about why there was a little break here uh, as we get going so here's Tim he's level 27 we're halfway just over it to level 28 once again, we are not a min-max character in any way. I like stressing that because I feel it's important to point out that you can actually go through the game without needing a guide that tells you to lower all your stats to 3 and then increase your will to like 13 or, or something like that. No, no, you, you can do it, you can, especially if you're using psionics. Just have an idea for what type of character you want to play and then keep at that type of character without too much deviation, which is to say, don't choose, don't begin increasing perception and take guns if you started down the path of using psionics and melee weapons, for example. You can do it, but it's tricky to recover should you make a mistake in your character build. Also, I want to prove that you can beat hard mode without a min-max character. In fact, with a character that is far from min-maxed, which is what Tim is, at least statistic-wise, stat-wise. Here's our skills. Once again, we are a melee metathermics character for the most part, and we dabble a little bit in temporal, temporal manipulation. And that is mostly for the slow spell, and occasionally we use temporal distortion on robots. We are a dodge and evade character, although we haven't put too many more points in dodge. We rely on uncanny dodge to get me out of melee trouble. But against bullets, I definitely want more evasion, so we keep leveling that every single time. We have a little bit of subterfuge with some lock picking and some pickpocket. Pickpocket mostly so we can get, I'll be honest, it was mostly for the radio in the DLC, the Black Sea, because uh, I want a Aegis Incorporated jet ski. That's why I took pickpocket. <laughs> Although if I was playing Oddy mode, pickpocket would have helped me gain some Oddies far earlier than later. And some oddies we would not have been able to get without pickpocket had we played oddie mode, but we are playing classic. And lockpicking, just because I thought it was kind of neat to pick, uh, take lockpicking, gives something that lets us get through doors and access locked items for p potential treasure. We are a crafter. We're leveling all these skills to 101, so we have 135, plus a little more when we're sitting inside our base. This should let me make... Well, actually, it has let us make some end-game weaponry and armor. 
power shields and tasers and what have you. And we're looking to increase our biology as well, so this way we can make some... I, I want to make the super, uh, super soldier drug, which I think it requires 120 effective skill. But I'm probably just going to keep leveling it to 135 because I can. Or maybe, maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe then we should dump points into Mercantile to make things a little cheaper for us. We'll see. We, we have, we have a, we, we're not going to level in this episode. Once again, Metathermics and a little bit of Temporal Manipulation. Far Feats! We have Nimble, because I don't want any armor penalty. We're a dodge and evade character. I want as much dodge and evasion as I can possibly get. If nothing else, this or this does lower our armor value by 15%, which gives us some movement points and makes up for using some armor should I desire to wear armor that actually inflicts us with an armor penalty later. We might make some armor that has some Psy Beetle carapace in it. I am thinking about it. Not sure just yet, though. Paranoia gives us extra initiative, useful for when we round a corner and suddenly combat starts, lets us detect traps and stealth enemies a little more often, and reduces the chances that we get critically hit. All useful for a character who has psionics and who doesn't have a high perception. Power management. Every single power item we create, things that use batteries to recharge, gets extra power in it. Let's us swing our electronic spears, our energy spears, shields, tasers, everything gets more power. Which also means we die. <laughs> Should a coil spider use the EMP blast on us? Uh, this guarantees we're dead. Sprint, because I like extra movement points. Probably could get away without using sprint, but it has been useful to close the distance and stab something in the face when we need it. Tranquility. I actually thought this reduced the Psy cost by 5 at full health when I took this many moons ago now, but it's the action point cost of all Psy abilities at by 5 at full health. Still useful, I think. Weapon Smith, extra chance to crit. Not as much as Reckless, but we don't suffer the extra crit chance with Reckless. Escape Artist, kept us alive in Deep OA, and will keep us alive in the future. Whenever something decides it wants to root us, this gets us out of that predicament. Uh, the spiders, for example, out in the DLC are going to be constantly webbing us. And they can they can time it such that they web us endlessly. We're permanently rooted. So this will let us escape that situation. Pun intended. Paramaniac! We set things on fire when we use our fire abilities. I don't think this affects Plasma Beam, but it affects Parakinesis and our Parakinetic Stream abilities. Same things on fire, generally makes them run away, which gives me a few seconds of breathing room, depending. And also, we've been pumping our specialization for it, so that we do even more damage when we do set something on fire. Cheap Shots! Incapacitate Chance! Always useful when it procs, means that we don't have to worry about that target till next round. And we do an extra 50% damage with our crits, with a spear that does decent damage. I suppose weakness, this is one of the two ways how I deal with heavily armored enemies. Assuming it hits, we lower their uh, resist resistance and threshold by 50%, meaning we can actually damage them with their spear for further hits. Pre-Med makes the next psionic ability cost no action points, increases its range, and half the psi cost. Really useful ability. I can't imagine not taking pre-Med if you're using a psionic uh, character. Uncanny Dodge. Guarantees an enemy misses us with melee. As long as I remember to use it, <laughs> or judge the distance that an enemy has to get to me properly, this can help keep us alive for a turn. And hopefully I can use my sprint or all my movement points to then get away from whatever it is that's threatening me. There are a few situations where this will not save our life, however. I'm thinking of the DLC where we'll be forced to fight endless amounts of strong men and blade maidens in tight areas where we, we cannot maneuver. Still, it's proving to be really useful for the base game. Psychonora Flexibility reduces the psi cost of sonic abilities we have in our head by 10%, assuming that we had more than one type of a school in our head. Future Orientation means that the cooldown of all of my temporal manipulation psi abilities is reduced by one turn, but increases their psi cost by five points. This is useful for dilation. And I think Distortion? I think both of those uh, utilize this. And then we have a bunch of ones that we picked up. Oh, I'm sorry. We also have Increased Will. 
get plus two points to will. And then we have four abilities that we picked up in-game. Psy Empathy, which gives us our Psy Bar. You cannot use Psy abilities without taking Psy Empathy. You also take a 20% hit to your hit points. Naval Combat lets us actually fight on our jet ski without huge penalties. We still have penalties, by the way, just not huge penalties. Hunter lets us do extra damage with certain weapons against critters. Critters are things like crabs and borer worms or cats or the like, so helps with that. And Fisherman, which we gained, I think, last episode or the one before that, where we can now never fail to fish up something when we're fishing. No longer will anything be able to get away from us, as it were. And our specializations. Exposed weakness lasts one more turn. Given that we don't have very many other ways to do with bots other than running up and slaughtering it and stabbing it with our spear, I would like, if, I, if we had to run away from that situation, for the expo like hide, I'm looking at the Naga protectors in particular, I would like this to last one more turn, give us a chance to possibly kill it rather than run around for four more turns waiting for exposed weakness to come off cooldown. Pre-Med has one less turn on cooldown. The power main is almost maxed. We do an extra 45% damage on the fire over time ticks when we set something on fire. All right, let me put a break here since that's will be good for the summary. All right, guys. And now I'm going to read a comment that Lost Fremen left me. Thank you as well, Lost Fremen. I, I really liked your comment because it, it showed me that I should probably explain what's going through my head. So... Well, I figure what we'll do <coughs> is I'll read Lost Sherman's comment in its entirety, and then I'll comment on certain bits of his comment, and this way we all understand how Tim functions. Because <laughs> not even Tim understands it all that well sometimes. And I've been living with myself since I've been alive, and I still don't quite understand how I work all the time. Here we go. So, um... Lost Fremen starts with boo. Even the game froze after hearing that. Yeah, wouldn't want to upset good old let me go and quickly rub one out every time you ask me why we're here, old field. Or the serpentines, which never had any second thoughts about spilling your guts. Remember how they spit acid at you and crit for 600 plus damage? Because, quote, you know, Unreal's a game where you need to prepare, and it's your fault that you don't have 2 million hit points, end quote. You know, Tim, who dares wins and live a little, and you live only once. You only live once, so who cares that we're playing as Tim, since none of your characters have ever done these things and seen these areas. Now, if you really want to say, if what you really want to say is that you're getting bored of the run, and it's going on long enough, and you want to record and upload other stuff, then that's absolutely fine. But this schlocky stuff is getting ridiculous. You almost did it here, and he has a timestamp, but then you instantly backed out in the next phrase. If you want to see him record Silent Hill 2, then just pirate it. And you know why? Because it's not your fault these duppets star strab from Konami will not sell it. Besides, nobody's asking you for receipts. And you do know and do you know why that is happening? For the same reason that they push Windows 10 down your throat, because it's absolute ifs compared to what they used to make. And the same goes for games. Why, of course I'd like to install your yiths piece of software that restarts my computer when it wants to update, and then scramble all my settings. Don't mind me. I'm just the dippest draft stab paying the bills around here, and I have infinite time to waste on a product that I paid for. This is clearly your computer in my house. <laughs> so, Lost Rebbit, I think, has three things. Uh, of course. Of course, when I'm recording. Lost Rebbit has two or three things that he is saying in this comment. And I would like to talk about them for a little bit. We could go over here and, and talk about it as we fight, but I'm gonna get distracted by, by the actual combat. So we'll make this we'll make this video a little longer for you guys as well. So this way uh, you guys are still entertained by us killing all the mutants. Right, back to the comment. So Lost Roman's pointing out that I think in the last episode, I had a few moments where I was going to say things that my character would not normally say. When I play, I suppose I should preface this by saying that generally when I play a role-playing game, 
see, I, I'm using qualifiers, like, generally, or most of the time. It's almost all the time, like, 99.9% .9 of the time. When I start playing a character, I have an idea for how this character should interact with the world around them. How, what type of character they are. How they speak to other, char other players, and so on. And, as such, I try to stick with that, with the character that I'm utilizing. So if I start down the good guy path, I want to stay on the good guy path for that character. But, last episode, it occurred to me that I'm never probably going to record another Underrail again. It's not my intention to. I love this game. I have over 2,100 hours invested in this game, viewer. <laughs> I have literal thousands of hours of, it, of this game played. Or it logged. But once I once I I tend to play all the characters the same way. They're all good guys. This is mostly because it also behooves you to be a good guy in the game, as being a bad guy generally works against you quite harshly in some instances. Uh, a small example is the Foundry quest line. Probably you've never seen anyone do the Foundry quest line the wrong way, which is possible. I believe, you, I've, I've read on the wiki many years ago, that it's possible for you to use dynamite to solve the problems of the beast. You just collapse the mine. But I believe this stops you from getting any Tychrome, and I don't think you're able to, unless I'm wrong about this, you might still be able to repair the, uh, the smelter, Gloria. But you might not be able to get Super Steel either if you do it that way. And of course, bad things happen to Foundry. There's a few other instances where you can mess up a quest, and I've done this in the past with Garrett as well. You might remember that when I had first recorded this game with Garrett an age ago, we did the Oculus quest line, my first time ever doing it, beyond Jack Quicksilver's quest in Southgate Station. And we messed up Foundry's option. I broke into the jail and freed the gentleman that way, which is not the optimum way you're supposed to do that quest, which meant that we failed the Oculus quest line, but we decided to press on anyway. That, and I didn't realize there was another way to do it at the time. Back to this. So I get some options in the dialogue that I can choose that I've never had before, or never, sorry, I've always had, but never chosen. And a part of me f wants to choose them just to see what happens when I do so. But this could lead to two things, both of which I have some issues uh, mentally getting around, if I can use uh, phrase it that way. Number one, if it leads to, like, a bad situation, for example, the conversation with Sophie we could have had in the Harker City Bar, I'd have to reload the game. Now, I've reloaded the game a bunch. We've died a bunch. This is not an Iron Man run. There's no problem with reloading the game. But I feel guilty reloading the game. And the more often I reload the game, the less... I want to play the game as it feels too gamey to me. I like going through all these games without dying very much, or without re oh, sorry, without reloading the game when things don't go my way. And often that means for games that have dialogue, not reloading the dialogue choices that I made, living with the, uh, the with the consequences of it and pushing on. So, thus I'm left with a situation where I know for the most part, what the best path is, or the path I've chosen in the past to navigate through these dialogue trees to end up at the result I want. This is similar to some of the Choose Your Own Adventure books that I have behind me, the Lone Wolf, uh, Way of the Tiger books, Star, what have you. I've gotten through many of these books growing up, and I know the, the optimum path because I went through it, and very rarely do I deviate from it. I should! deviate from it, but I don't. And this is the case here in Underrail, especially for this run at the moment, because my intention when I recorded this run was for the most part to play a non-Mimex character, show that it could be done, use all the same choices I had made in the past when I played this exact character last summer, but on hard mode. Ooh, and guys, I gotta use the bathroom. I, I will be right back. 
Oh my goodness, I, I was talking as I brought up OBS. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> All right, we're back. So, oh crap, my, my train of thought. <laughs> my train of thought. So, so what Lost Fremen is, I believe, saying <laughs> is choose the things you want to choose if you want to choose them. Don't, you've never seen some of these options before. You've never chosen some of these dialogue choices before. Choose them. See, see what happens. But I, I can't. <laughs> my character needs the, my in-game character here, Tim, needs motivation to choose those options, which don't, I think, fit with how he's been throughout the game. It feels too weird to me. Now, we could come up with motivation as to why he decides to be a little more mean, for example, with his options, or more curt, as it were, terse with characters. He's been yelled at, picked on, fired upon. Many attempts in his life have attempt have been attempted. He's died <laughs> several times in those different frames, I believe is what Six would, would call them. And lived, so maybe he could be a little tougher. He is the uh, uh, Invictus as well, for example. So he should be tough. But I play him like me. <laughs> And I'm a pushover, and I'm uh, naive, and I give in to what people want all the time, even though I know when I'm being lied to and stuff like that. Anyway, anyway, so when it comes to choices like when we what we had with the sisters, I still wanted to choose the I wanted to choose some of the different options to see how it would play out because I've never chosen them before. But we're playing a good guy. And my mental block kind of prohibits me from choosing those bad options. And once again, I really wanted this to be like my other playthroughs of the game, only on a harder difficulty level. Especially because at this point, everything we're seeing is now new to me. I've not, well, in so much that this is, I've not been here on hard mode before. So this is, this is the first for, for us. Now... Lost Fremen also has pointed out, uh, or has guessed, that I'm getting bored of Underrail, and it's fine to take a break, or it's just stop the recording altogether. I have several playlists on my channel where I've stopped. Uh, I hate having stopped playlists, as I think about the fact that I meant to finish Sacrifice over the, over the course of last summer. I never did, for, for example. But uh, just stop, uh, Lost Fremen says. Just s stop and just do... Record something that you like. Well, uh, I'm I'm not actually tired of Under Ale. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, I, I, I like this game, uh, and I want to see it to its completion. I would like to finish the actual base game, and I would like to see all the DLCs with you guys together, and that's what I want to do. Uh, it helps that I... Uh, not to... Um, I'm going to bring it up, I guess, really quick, because we're going to talk about this a little bit later, too. But, um... Well... I mean, I, st I still have cancer. <laughs> we haven't beaten it yet. So, this might be the last time we get to record Under Rail, and I'd like to finish the run if I have the time left in me to do that. And so, well, I I'm going to finish it. And I'm not, I'm not tired of the game at all. But it has been tough. Uh, so, let's go into this briefly. Uh, I'm sick again. I've picked up a cold this time around. Or, and or COVID is back. I'm having all the symptoms I had before, just a little less severe than what it had been before. I'm, I'm stuffy. I can tell I'm congested. have a little bit of sinus pressure. No fevers, some chills, some uh, sweating at night. It's, uh, it's back, or something similar to it is back. I can't believe... I can't believe it's gonna, I'm going to have this for like a month. I just got over COVID. I was in the hospital for a week with it. I'm still going through cancer treatments. I had a bone marrow biopsy done a few weeks ago. I'm still uh, in a little bit of pain uh, from it, but I'm, I'm braving through. I got pain meds if I decide I really want to take them, uh, for example. So there's all this stuff in real life for my health that is vying for time. And often when I, when I wake up and I sit in front of my computer... I just want to zone out sometimes. I do want to still record under rail, which is why I think I've managed to at least get like three videos up a week. I, I definitely want to go back to one a day if I can. 
but it's tough sometimes because I just don't want to record some days. And it's not because I don't like Underrail. It's because I'm just not in the mood to record anything uh, that day. I'm just in the mood to, to play games that I've played before. Grindy, grindy, turn your brain off games. <laughs> or in some instances, just play a game I played before because I, w I just want to play it again. It's weird what I want to do with the remaining hours or uh, months of my life. Hopefully I get years of my life. Well, I'm waiting for the bone marrow biopsy results to come back. I'll let you guys know what that is the moment I get them back. But uh, at the moment, at the moment it's playing grindy games. I don't know why this is. I don't know why this is. But make no mistake, uh, I am not bored of the run. Not at all. I'm having a blast playing Under Rail. It's just some days I feel too sick to record. I'm too tired to record, or I'm just I'm just not feeling it. And if I'm not in the mood to record, it will come out in the video that you guys will be able to tell. I I won't have fun. I'll be down on the game. I won't be chatting with you guys as often. These are things I've noticed myself when I play games in the past, especially games that I begin to dislike. Underreal, I don't think it's a game I will ever dislike, but I do have to be in the mood to record it for like an hour and a half or so when I sit down in front of my computer to, to play it. And so, uh, if there's any detection of me not wanting to cut the video out early, it's only because of, probably because I'm, I'm, I've been sick over the past uh, few weeks with COVID, and or now something different instead. But nope, uh, nope, nope, it, it's fine. Um, and we did, by the way, make a schlocky decision, didn't we, uh, Lost Fremen? I said I'm not sticking my hands in anything that I don't know what it is, and I ignored the one hole in the wall in the DLC. Only when we climbed the Frost Tower to stick my hand inside that one canister. Shouldn't have done it. Shouldn't have done it. And as I was doing it, I'm like, oh, Tim, you said you weren't going to do something like this in the DLC, and I knew I said it. But I did it anyway, because I've never been up in the Frost Tower. Oh, I'm sorry. I've been up there twice. And so I wanted to see what was inside of it. There was nothing really inside of it that we needed anyway. So in the future, I won't stick my hand in it. <laughs> uh, and then the rest of, I think, what Lost Remnant is saying is about uh, Resin, uh, sorry, Silent Hill 2. So I never played this. So we'll talk about this very briefly because I don't have an idea about what Silent Hill 2 is. Having not watched it, or having, I'm sorry, having watched one or two small bits of it, like at the beginning of the game, but I've never played any of the Silent Hills. They look great from what I had seen in the past. I like the idea of you exploring this city filled with these horrifically kind of humanish looking mon uh, terrors in the, in the game. It was a weird setting, right? Like purgatory or something like that. Mm. But my issue, uh, my issue, my issue, I don't have an issue. I, I've, since I've never played any of the Silent Hills, I can't bring myself, I mean, I could very easily do it, but I have issues bringing myself to actually acquire the ROMs for it and play it through an emulator, like I have for other games on my channel. All the games I have played on my channel have been games that I have owned at some point in my life. With the exception of a few arcade games I have on a on MAME. But I have played those, just at the arcade. <laughs> Arguably I spent enough money on them that I should own them. But uh, I, I can't say that for those. But like games like, let's say, Eternal Darkness that we played two years ago or three years ago. Has it been three years? Two years. During Halloween, I own that on the GameCube, for example. The same thing with Ogre Battle 64. But the Silent Hills were never something I possessed. So I can't bring myself to pick up the ROM for it, as in good faith, I know I don't, I, I haven't owned it. If Konami does end up releasing the game again, especially on the PC, because I, I don't own a PlayStation 5 or whatever it is, they're, whatever they're going to release it on, probably, uh, I will pick it up and we will play it together. Although I, I have a hunch everyone else is going to be picking it up and playing it at the same time. <laughs> And the last statement I think Lost Herman made is about uh, something I just went through, which was updating my graphics drivers. I suppose this also goes into my entire first bit of this little dialogue, too. I don't change very often. When I find something that works, that's what I stick with 
for the most part. I think most people are probably like me in that regard. But I had my computer. Everything was configured for it for months slash years. I have not done a Windows update on my computer in years, viewer. About two and a half or three years. I installed something called Sledgehammer on my computer, which disables Windows' ability to update itself. I still get a pop-up that tells me my computer has important updates to install every Friday afternoon. It doesn't. It has not a single one of them. But my computer hasn't changed. It's in a working condition. There's been no issues. And so when I updated, heaven forbid, OBS today, something I haven't done as well for months and months, it then required me to update my graphics drivers or to wrestle with OBS to put it back to its uh, the previous version it had been on. Oh, I hate that. So I decided to update the drivers instead. And it looks like everything's working currently, at least for Underrail. Though I have several other games I'll have to check out now to make sure everything's working. But I don't like making changes. Which is another reason why I choose all the same dialogue choices. <laughs> and finally, back to more of that, uh, the first statements about this game and how I play it. I think I mentioned before, but I tended, and still tend to, play this game as I play a game like Diablo 2 or Grim Dawn. I play this game because I love the combat in it, for the most part, and I want to see if my thematic builds can survive all the different challenges that present themselves uh, to these characters of mine, more than the different dialogue choices that present themselves, and exploring what happens when you go down different trees or join different groups, for example. So, my mind is set on, right now, going to this next room and slaughtering all the mutants, more than talking with the uh, investigation forces about setting up the through wall imager down here later, for example. So, God, I hope that made sense. And I hope I didn't go on too many tangents. But I hope I explained myself a little bit. Or a lot of bits. And I hope it made sense. <laughs> and I'm repeating myself. So let me put another cut here. And then we'll be back to start the actual adventure. All right, everyone. Let's go ahead and slaughter some mutants. We're going to use our Tychrome Spear that's not electrified for this. It's normal mutants, mutant dogs, and hunchback mutants over here, if I recall correctly. Yeah, so we'll stick with our shock super... St uh, sorry, we'll stick with our normal spear for this. I don't think we need to use batteries while we're over here. Although it does just occur to me... Ah, okay, I didn't bring any, any normal grenades with me. Yep, gonna be mutants. I love the tiling here. It feels like this is part of some sort of metro system. This textbook clearly belonged to the Biocorp University, but it has deteriorated far beyond readability. To my memory, there is no mutants over on this side of this area, which is why I'm just opening the doors without doing the door trick. A 5mm Neo Luger, we'll take it and sell it. Storage 2 key. Nothing in the file cabinets. We're going to leave these doors open in case we need to fight some mutants. Now, did I bring my... I did not bring my endoscope. Oh, the hunchback actually walked out here just briefly. Right, there are more hunchbacks. Okay, let's walk in and just start combat. Oh, we can't get to that area from this side. Then let's start combat here. We'll run up and we'll set all this acid on fire. 
This way they can't pick those up. Do a little bit of damage to the mutants. Set ourselves on fire. And spread some fire around. Oh, they cancel pick up the they cancel pick up them up. <laughs> I not think they can pick up the barrels after the after we damage them. That's a ton of mutants and acid dogs. And we're intimidated. My goodness! What the heck? Every single barrel. This is the exact opposite of what I thought was going to happen. Every single barrel. Okay. Let's heal. And then we're going to run around and set fire to everything. Oh, so I put everything on fire. They will all run around to this side thanks to the lack of fire, but they all will still run through fire. Okay. So we can... Oh, do I not have it in my head? No, we do. Okay, so let's put this here. Let's set fire to all of this. Nice. That's gonna burn up those dogs. Then we'll run around the corner here. We are still intimidated. Let's stay here at the moment. Let them come to me. The dog got burned up. I mean, I'm probably fine just waiting here while they all run around in, in flames. So we can use pre-med. Nice. We can then use recurrence on this guy. And move away. And move away again. Make sure we don't get hit with yet another acid barrel. I think what helped us take not a good avoid damage is we have decent evasion, which reduces damage we take from like AOE abilities and what have you. Look at all the acid on the ground. My goodness. All that fire damage in the 30s and 40s. Not bad. Whoa! Two more hunchbacks. Both of them are armed with acid barrels. I don't want to move up and fight them. But I do. But we're still going to run the... We're not going to do so. <sighs> Woo! My goodness, there's a lot of them here. Oh, incapacitated. The 
mutant weak capacity might burn up and die, in which case it will free up room for the other one to reach us. I think that's it. Woo! All right, that wasn't that was not bad at all. But now we need to wait till all for all the acid to go away. <laughs> yeah, I thought they could not pick up acid barrels that were damaged. They weren't allowed to do so. <laughs> so that's good to know. Unfortunately, it also is knowledge I'm going to, probably going to forget. Our armor could use some repairs. Okay. And don't tell anyone. But we'll increase the timer here. And just uh, let time pass. So all the acid goes away. That's... I'm guessing that's all the mutants also in this area, so hopefully we won't have any others to worry about. And with this done, we'll leave after this is done, let Preservation know what we accomplished, get a new task for them, and then see about what we can do for investigation. We want to talk with Detrius, who's outside of the Institute, uh, to start with. No, what? There's still more. I saw... There's a lot more! <laughs> this is not a little bit of them. This is, this is quite a few of them. Oh, look at that! They can actually shoot me and throw things... Through the hole. That's a shame. No, one, like one hit point left. Don't want to eat a rock. Oh, they're not coming in here either, which is smart. They shouldn't. But I don't want to walk through those super high flames and have my armor damaged even more. So we'll just stay in the corner at the moment. Okay, yep, and they're not going to risk combat by walking through more fire. I guess we didn't kill the numbers I thought we did. We killed only two more of them. There's still a bunch of dogs left and other normal mutants, so it's going to be a bit annoying. But we'll deal with them face-to-face, -face, the leftovers. Alright, well then, Tim, let's do it. So, that's way too many of them for me not to throw a fireball here. And we'll put a recurrence... Just barely get out of your line of sight. Nope. Oh, you, you missed. Oh, but we're intimidated. Can we stream? 
I have to move here to do it. Okay. Let's shut the door. Alright, and I'm going to clear off all the corpses, let all the acid fade, <laughs> and then be back. So, oops. <laughs> There's no BS for you guys. Uh, give me a few seconds, guys. I'll be right back. Alright, everyone. Um, nothing fantastic, obviously, on the corpses. Just acid glands for the most part, and a few okay acid dog pelts. But we don't need those. What I do want to do is explore the rest of this room. So we're going to wear our gas mask here, which means we lose... Oh, I just enervated too. It doesn't matter. We need to do this. Okay, so we lose the one psionic slot. There might be an Adi item in one of the toxic barrels, but I'll be honest, I don't care about a 70 point, 75 point Adi item to search them all. We should search these shelves, though, in case there is something there we want. So let's sprint. A few bits of ammo, but nothing else. Nothing there. I don't think we have to do what we see us doing either, by the way. I think we can just uh, walk out now that we've cleared this area of mutants. Uh-oh. I did not do the door trick. Let's run over here. We're wearing, the, we're wearing our gas mask at the moment. More mutants! I mean, we weren't really surprised by this. That was a critical on the back one. But we'll get the front one. You know, we can also set them on fire with a with a stream. Oh, come on. Okay, even more than dead. Careful, Tim. Don't take too much acid damage or you won't be able to regenerate. Too late. Okay, well, we can use a normal hypo. This is where we'll put down the through wall imager on this table when we come back here for investigations quests. Mutated cockroach? You're not sure if mutations make it more or less disgusting than regular cockroaches. You know, I never found cockroaches to really be disgusting. They're weird because they're, uh, right? Cockroaches are... Are they true insects? Like a, like a stick bug? It's been a while like a long time since I've seen a cockroach in real life. We here in New Jersey, we have flying ones outside that uh, are annoying, <laughs> I suppose. I wonder where those came from. I've never had an actual like black cockroach in any place I have lived in. I tend to keep my home and hearth clean. To, uh, and there's no, like, cockroaches or insects. Uh, well, I mean, I do have fleas. I do have fleas. But that's, be that's because I brought those cats inside last summer. I still get about maybe one or three, f one to three fleas a day on in my flea traps. Okay, that's it for this area. Get out of here. Yeah, I've never, uh, I've never had cockroach issues. Because, once again, I keep my, my home is organized, sorted, cleaned, vacuumed. 
dusted everything. Everything to make sure that I don't have any issues with insects. Okay, armor's looking okay. We'll put this back on us. And that f that's this area. There might be another cockroach in one of the toxic barrels, but nah. I'm fine not searching them. We don't, we're not taking chemistry, or at least that's not my intention. So we don't need any of the toxic sludge you can get in s from that stuff. To make the toxic grenades. I've been pretty amazed watching some people play this game, by the way. And the choices that they make on dominating mode in particular. I would never have thought to kill Moda or Modra at Southgate Station using a toxic grenade since it doesn't count as you killing him and then looting him to get an amazing suit of armor early game, for example. Never would have thought of ever doing that. Okay. So that is that area cleared. What else do we have to do? We should probably go and get the Hakate Research Outpost information, which is in our home. We still have to use the experimental pistol a little more. Okay, and we need to talk with Ditrius. So let's do the Ditrius thing first. Since we're outside, we'll go home and grab the research protein design. And we'll come back and turn those quests in. I like turning in quests in bunches, if I can, rather than do each one individually. Feels more rewarding, since you get a nice amount of EXP. George's evolution, brother. What do you need? Can you open the gate for me? George guides you. <coughs> Alright, Detrius, hello. Hello again. <coughs> hmm. Detrius. Someone at the Institute of George is interested in the fact that you survived that drop zone plague. He seems surprised by your statement. Interested? Why? Because you're special. You survived the plague despite the fact that it killed everyone from your family. It could be something genetic for all we know. I don't think I'm that special. I... I don't. His voice starts wavering nervously. <laughs> and if it's in my genes and... Why did my whole family die? Should we all have had that resistance if it's like, how do you call it, uh, hereditary? Uh, besides, what if it turns out I'm not that special? Then what's gonna happen to me? That I don't know. Uh, so, okay, so, so here's an example. So I would always choose the first option with the belief that we're being polite and it suits us because of our higher intelligence. The second one is more terse, very, just take it, you idiot, uh, response. So instinctively, I want to choose the first option with Tim, not the second one. So we'll choose the second this time around, huh? Let, let, let's try it. Stop being such a wimp, Detrius. You came here to join an Institute of Chort. What more do you want? Use your lucky chance now. Take it. Ah, pipe works. Yeah, yeah, you are right, but what do they need me for? What, what I mean is, what will they do to me? They're going to perform some simple tests. They won't hurt you, so don't worry. All right, count me in. He flashes a joyful smile. Hardcore. Hardcore. I'm as nervous as a caged hopper, but count me in. I'm ready. Great. I'll go talk to the Chortists. 
Expect someone to come for you soon. Alright, so that ended up with the same exact outcome as the other option did. I... I'm not a fan of that, generally. <laughs> In the Choose Your Own Adventure books I possess, often, there are best choices to make in them that avoid you using resources or avoid combat in them in the lone wolf or way of the tiger series for example or they have the the chances of you winning some of the battles are better depending upon the answers or choices that you select this means that there's never ever an, a reason for you to choose those worse options once you realize that they are indeed worse of course i'm probably one of the only people who still read choose your own adventure books and by that, I mean the uh, single-player adventure books uh, throughout the course of a year. <laughs> Let alone me play them. But I find it annoying that some often they don't feel balanced, if I can use that term. That said, by the way, on an unrelated slash related note... Oh, crap, I accidentally brought some acid glands. The Lone Wolf book series has recently One second, sorry about this everyone. I have we need to do this. Has recently had a bunch of reprints for the first I think it is twelve books? Eleven books? And they've rebalanced things and provided some optional rules for you. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then then you won't care. <laughs> if you do know what I'm talking about, I very much like the reprints. I feel they fixed most of the balance issues that I've always had with the Lone Wolf series growing up. The Summer Sword, in particular, that weapon you get in the second book. Stupidly powerful unbalanced everything and they couldn't balance it as they went forward with it so i would highly recommend the reprints if you are interested in them and they did better than those other than the reprints they did several years ago with the optional um option like there was a second choose your own adventure in the hard uh, in those books when they reprinted them five or eight years ago now but there were still lots of typos, lots of entry mistakes, you couldn't complete some books. These don't seem to have that issue. Uh, who makes these ones? Who makes these ones? HomeGuard Press makes the ones I possess. I have the first ten here. And I would recommend them if you're interested in uh, Choose Your Adventure books. You get to keep stats. There's combat in the game. You get to manage your uh, your health and your uh, all the different skills you want to take with you. I very much like it. Very much like it. Okay, so that's the protein design we have. Oh, you know what we can do? I never fitted in the other gem into Synthet's head, uh, head slot. Head slot? His headband. What does this do if we do this? Oh, did I not take it? I did. Okay, so let's see. So this is Synthet's hexagon gem that he left for us as a gift outside of the portal. So let's see what happens if we put it into this refocus. It's a hexagon gem similar to the one found on Synthet's headband. You wonder what would happen if you switched the two gems. Let's try it. Switch, replace the pentagon gem with the hexagon gem. You remove the pentagon gem from its thin aluminum socket which you then gently bend outward with your hand so that it may accommodate its new insert. After some more careful reshaping, you find the gem to be properly secured, and you can't but marvel at how it gives the headband a more symmetrical and illustrious look. What did this do? 
Each face of this brilliant gem displays a differently dimensioned fractal reflection when looked into. Staring at the hexagon gem hurts your eyes even more than the pentagon one. Psychokinesis decreased by 40, that doesn't help us at all. Psybility cost decreased by 30% when focused. Perception increased by 3 when focused. Detection increased by 70 when focused. Okay, that perception increased by 3 means that we could run around and look for secrets with this. Interesting. That's something I will do off screen as opposed to let, watching, make you guys watch me go through this game for another 40 hours for each area, walking, then standing still and seeing if I find a secret in that area. But that's 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 really useful if you're looking for secrets. Combined with a uh, wow, combined with uh, mushroom soup and the juice, that's plus five perception for ten perception. You can get plus one more perception with... No, you, no, you have to wear this on, on your head slot, so you can't wear goggles. But you could also use the Marsh Honey for two more perception. For 12 total, which will find a great many secrets in the game. Okay. So, let's... Let's go back to Dude first. To buy more juice. Hey, dude, give me juice. Oh, he's not selling any. Okay. Then back to University Station. Playing for, well, I've been playing for longer than 30, uh, 30 minutes, but most of, the, half of this, easily half of this so far has been the summary and explaining stuff, or talking with you guys. Thank you, by the way, everyone, for sticking it out with this playthrough. <coughs> it's, <coughs> it's been a bit rough trying to keep the recordings of this going. As you can see, everything else has dropped off of my radar. I keep meaning to play Resident Evil 4 some more, and I'm not. There's other games I keep meaning to start recording, and I haven't. Uh, being sick and not knowing how much, uh, how much time I can devote to certain things stops me from recording the other games. Well, but I'm sorry, that's not true. That's not true. I've been, once again, busy recording Northern Journey, and I have 10 videos of it uploaded to my channel, set to go active in September. Since it, I feel like that game deserves to be uploaded during the fall season. Although it's not truly a horror game. But it's, some of it is very uncanny. Thank you for opening that door. Go shut it. All right, let's uh, talk to Vista. Yes, I talked to a man called Detrius, who has survived the plague that hit Core City's drop zone several years ago. He said he's willing to become a subject. Detrius, eh? Tell me more about this man. Well, he's a zoner whom I found right in front of the Institute. His whole family died from the plague, yet he survived. He also told me he was rarely, if ever, ill in his life. Never ill? And you said his whole family died. Fair enough. I think we're onto something here. I have a short. I think he is who we're looking for. If what you say is true, we might not even need other subjects at all. Could it be better? I don't think anyone will bug me for a while regarding that project. Apex. I just need to contact someone to bring him in and... A uh, job is done. <laughs> it's an honor to serve the Institute of Church, Principal Investigator. Indubitably, you have earned yourself some good coin for this. And you didn't have to even walk very far. Here are 200 Charons. That is all regarding this matter. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Troy guide you, brother. Nice. The 3,000 experience points is actually what I cared about more than the cash. Once again, a part of me really wished 
that the way these quests would work is every time you complete one of them for like investigation, that it would make Chort stronger on you somehow. Like this quest here would make Chort even more resistant to say biological damage if you were going to do biological damage to it, to it. And some of the physics quests would let him detect you no matter where you were in his room, for example, with the through wall imaging idea or something of that sort. I, th I thought would be a neat twist where you're earning money and experience here for completing the quests, but you're also improving Chort, which is maybe not something you want to do. I'm very weird. Okay, next we go to the chemistry lab. You know, I said we were going to level this episode, but we might actually level... I did not realize how much experience points we were going to earn through quest turn-in. Yeah, we... I think we might level. Oh, oh, oh! It's you, brother. I managed to find some data on protein design in the Hakate Research Outpost. Here, give them the data. You did? Oh, that is Apex, brother. I'll send this right through to my assistants. And this is for you, brother. He gives you 300 stitching coins. I'll mention this to Ep Epis... Wow. Epicopos Lydia at the next symposium. Have no fear. Listen, if you keep this up, you might have a good future with investigation. Honestly. Okay. Well, Troy guide you, Georges. Troy guide you too, Tim. We leveled. Wow. I did not think these were worth that much experience points. All right, I need to put another break in here because I need to look at my build. So I'll be right back, everyone. All right, everyone. This is actually kind of tricky because the next two levels, I don't have any feats of two levels. The next two times we hit a even level, I have no feats and my build picked on my, uh, on the online build thing. <laughs> I couldn't make up my mind what I wanted, and everything at this point feels like it's for fun. Since we should, I don't know if we can, but we should be able to be short with what we have. In any case, the, the skills are kind of easy. We're going to put just five points in these. I think we'll take a little more pickpocket to get this to 135. And then with my leftover 20 points, we'll put those into biology. I would like the super soldier drug to enough points to be able to create it. And that means we need 130 for biology if I want that. It's one of the last biology things we'll be able to create with a... Uh, I don't care about the... Actually, maybe I do care about the drugs that require uh, 150. There's a poison, that heartbreaker poison, and then there's the. What is it called? There's a there's a another drug I've never ever created that uh, you can get down in the deep caverns, not the regenerative one. It's called like a neurosmil or something like that. I don't even know what it does, but you need 150 biology to actually make the drug. So with the one 101 or 135, we should have what it takes to make the drugs when we get back to our home. Just not down in deep caverns. So that will do it for our skill points. Or, yeah, that's right, Tim. And then here. So I've been, I was looking at all what's available to us, viewer. And there's only, a, there's like two things I could think of. Monster Slayer. Okay, well, all, hold on. All of the extra damage against certain types of monsters or creatures could be helpful. Monster Slayer will help us down in Deep Caverns in particular. It, I don't know if Chort counts as a monster, but it would help us with that too. This would help us with pirates and obviously all other uh, people. The Commissioner would help us against robots, which we'll have some trouble with. As well. The Naga Protectors in particular will give us some issues.
Alternatively, I skip all those and I grab meditation for more Psy points, 25 extra. That could be useful. We are definitely using Psy as you saw more often. Might let us get another plasma beam. We'll take meditation. And for specializations, we are now done with Pyromaniac. All right, done. Let's go and turn in the preservation quest. And then preservation will have us go into the West Wing. Which I guess we'll start that here too. What other quests are there? Oh, the, the combat pistol. Okay, we'll use that in the West Wing. Okay, let's do, let's do this. Since we're here, we can visit Hana and see if she'll buy that pistol we found. Hey, Hana. Let's see. Are you buying weaponry? You are. Merchants have recycled their inventory. At least she has. Nothing I am interested in. Mediant. George's evolution, brother. Speak. I have just <coughs> I've just been to Utility Station 7. Ah, great. Let's hear the report. Your fears were justified. A large group of lunatics has managed to get inside the utility station. And? I took care of them. Well, uh, let's, uh, let's do three. Well, the utility station is now full of lunatic corpses. Grin. I expected nothing less. Well done, Tim. I am very pleased. I'm sure His Excellency will be most pleased once I inform him of what you've done. To tell you the truth, I expect you to find something there. Foreign bodies. <laughs> My Rassifors heard strange sounds coming from behind those doors, so I decided to send you as a test, just to see if you, if what you did at the Emporium was due to luck or skill. And now that I have the results, foreign bodies were successfully removed from the system. He smiles. Here you go. He hands you 450 stitching coins. Something to give you further motivation, brother. These lunatics are really drawn to the Institute, it seems. First the figurine, then the utility station. Do you have a theory on what drives them to do that? Please, I'd rather not discuss the motives of those inbred ferals. Their actions are a product of their devolved minds, and as such are devoid of reason and logic. Therefore, why try to understand something which cannot be understood? Agree, no? Any other questions? Well, I hope you are now convinced I'm not a wimp. I'd like to hear if you've got more work for me. <laughs> I'm beginning to like you more and more. But be careful what you wish for, brother, for I do have some interesting work that could once again expose you to great dangers. I'm all ears. Great. What I'm about to send you next is going to be the exact same place you were told not to go. Ah, I see. You're going to send me to the West Wing, right? Precisely. Approximately five days ago, a Rassifor combat unit under the command of Efriator Mateo was dispatched to the West Wing after Principal Investigator Sheft of the Department of Physics informed us about strong electromagnetic emissions detected from the West Wing's northern section. The West Wing hasn't been opened since year 67, just over 30 years ago, and so we were reluctant to do anything about it. But after Sheft consulted His Excellency, he... we finally decided to dispatch a unit. Unfortunately... That turned out to be a mistake. Completely abortive. We lost all contact with them. We do not know where they are, what happened to them, 
Nothing, brother. Harmo Starvos, as dedicated to Torgism as intelligent as he is, a man I truly respect, don't get me wrong, should have listened to my advice. Do you agree, no? What I want from you is simple. Go to the West Wing and find out what happened in the missing unit. Then return and report your findings to me. We will consider our actions from there. Why'd you wait five days to go look for them? I hope you realize, brother, that another unit sent there could potentially meet the same fate as the first one. It is a great risk. Now, with you coming along and doing some impressive feats on your own, I thought why not drop this one on the table and see if you're interested, brother. I will go to the West Wing. Well, in that case, short guide you, brother. Take the door past Iden's library and take care. I will. So long. My goodness, 5,000 experience points immediately. Did they lower the amount of experience points you need to level up, by the way? It feels like they did. An age ago, an age ago? Two years ago, you used to have to fill the exp, EXP bar twice to level up when going from 25 higher. It feels like they lowered that requirement to me. Okay, let's equip this. Oh, we still have more people we can talk to up here. We have another 16 minutes left. Let's go ahead and talk with more folks. Amelia, this is the girl who interviewed us. We weren't able to search her pockets, I think, before. So let's... Oh, I think I might... Did I do this off-screen? I don't think I did. Palm bracelet. A floral bracelet that wraps around the palm and the middle finger. Made from a synthetic... Viscoelastic material that provides both flexibility during hand motion and rigidity... Uh, rigidity when it unstressed by movement. Perhaps one of the wealthy merchants would be interested in it. I hope so, because we're taking it from her. Tim, I am very pleased to see you. What can I do for you? Can you tell me more about the West Wing? The West Wing was in ruins long before the existence of the Institute of Chort, and was always sealed off from the rest of the building. When the Great Earthquake of the year 24 struck and demolished the library, refectory, and a good part of the main hall, a discussion took place about whether to restore the West Wing together with everything else. Since the Institute building is very large, and especially back when the number of members was smaller, there was no need to rebuild the severely damaged West Wing. It would take away too many resources from other, more important things. Therefore, the entrance to it was sealed again while other damaged sections were repaired. As years passed, various creatures found their homes in the darkness of the West Wing. People began complaining about scratching sounds coming from the walls, hearing strange voices calling them. Some even mentioned seeing the faceless looking at them from the ventilation grates or other lightless openings. Of course, some of these were just wild exaggerations and outstanding interpretations conjured by the petrified minds. But the fact that the West Wing wildlife had expanded was a real, proven issue. In year 67, more than 40 years after the West Wing had been demolished, a Rassifor expedition led by Ephriator Gromus was dispatched to cull the overpopulated wildlife. The operation was a success, for a time. Culling was going as planned for two days. It was slow and methodical due to the West Wing's size and danger factor. Then, after two days, contact was lost with the whole expedition. Only one Rassifor returned, mutilated beyond recognition. The poor man dragged the upper half of his severed body back to the checkpoint, but only just. He died moments after seeing his brothers and sisters watching him in horror. The cut that severed his body in half was astoundingly clean. And to this day, no one is sure what creature is capable of imagining something like that. The West Wing was closed and remained closed for 30 more years until it was reopened recently. Uh, I didn't pardon me. I should have shortened the story. But there is something fascinating about it. Something mysterious. Well, oh. Did you have any more questions? What can you tell me about yourself, Amelia? I'm sorry, Tim, but I'd rather not speak of myself. The only thing I'm willing to tell you is that I am institute-born. And I have been a dedicated shortest for an eternity of my life. 
Any other questions? Neonate? No. Troy guide you, Preposter. Troy guide you, Tim. Without my endoscope, I'm not willing to open one of these doors only to walk in to find someone in the room I'm not allowed to be in myself. So I guess we're done here. The library is down this way. Okay, we'll talk with the two tortoises out here, and then we'll wrap up the session, and we'll explore the West Wing in the next episode. The Rassifor duo seems to be guarding the entrance to this gloomy corridor. The smell of mold and staleness emanates from afar. The few lit flares thrown around do nothing to erase the feeling of consuming darkness dwelling at the end of the hallway. You are stopped by the female Rassifor, and the conversation begins with an already anticipated warning. Stop, brother. This is the Institute's West Wing. I would highly recommend turning around and going back unless, of course, you have a death wish. Duty calls me from the darker end of the hallway, sister. Then may Chort guide you back to us. Well, that's it. We could just move on, move on now, I guess. But let's let's chat with them and see what they what they have to say about the West Wing. Why are you still here, brother? What is so dangerous about the West Wing? What isn't? One moment you could have a piece of ceiling drop right on your head and smash your skull. The second the deadly creep might jump straight from the shadow and call you on the spot. We don't go there, brother. Well, except for Effie Tormato and a Rasfor unit that went with them, but they still haven't returned. Look, I can't stop you from going there. But I can warn you, the rest is up to you. What can you tell me about Ephrator Matteo? The two Rassifors glance at each other. He and a unit of Rassifors were dispatched to the West Wing to investigate a strange electromagnetic disturbance detected by the Department of Physics, which made them turn to preservation. They claim that there is something in the West Wing emitting these waves, something important enough to warrant sending a unit there. Before them, I think the last time someone went there was the year Monsignor Peter died. You're 67. I remember my mother telling me that particular entry to the West Wing when I was very young. It's a pretty grim story. I think it's best if I skip telling it. When was Ephrator's unit sent there? Five days ago, I believe, brother. Interestingly, shortly after that, Pavel, a Rassifor, volunteered to go there. Something for the Department of Physics. And he too never returned. So I hope you understand, Tim, that this beautiful West Wing is a dangerous place. Proven. What can you tell me about the West Wing? Well, it's the West Wing of the Institute building, and it's been in ruins long before most of us were even born. We guard the entrance to, to it so that no creeps can sneak in and, well, call everyone. I see. Let me ask you something else. I'm not going anywhere. Ask if you wish. You mentioned someone named Pavel going to the West Wing. Yes. He was one of us Rassifors. Was. He was crazy enough to accept a task from the PI chef from the Department of Physics. It was something about some terahertz device, was it? Yeah. T-ray generator tech. It allows for through-wall imaging. At least, that is what the investigators of physics claim. Pretty apex stuff, if what they say is true. Yeah, well, that Apex stuff got him cold. Just the thought of being sworn by those vile West Wing creeps and shivers down my spine. Poor Pavel. Why don't you just bar the doors and leave this place be? Doesn't that make more sense than having guards here? Well, they were barred before, brother. Effie Torbatillo and his Rassifors were the reason we opened these cursed doors. Now they have to stand guard in case they come back. That's very unlikely by now. Still... Orders are orders. Truth be told, with all the strange things happening, I mean, stranger than usual, I personally think it's better to have a Rassifors here until the situation is cleared. 
Plus, I'm sure I did His Excellency, Harmo Stavros, know best. You like being here. Is that what you're trying to say? Uh, I meant Rassifors that aren't us. You and me. Sorry for the confusion. Oh, brother. Well, duty calls me from the darker end of the hallway, sister. Okay, they can keep all their stuff. Uh, no, Tim. You took pickpocket. Pick their pockets and at least take their charons. They're not going to need them. Especially with what's going to be eventually happening. All right, let's step over to the West Wing. And viewer, we'll stop here. So thank you guys for watching, and maybe I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone. Hey, everyone. I decided to go and check on Watt Pear and see if we could get him to... convince him to go to the Institute of Chort to satisfy Risco's requirement to find someone who is immune to disease. And while walking through Junkyard to get to him, the two hidden mutants spawned. So I figured I'd show a battle against the mutants on the way to them. So hello. <laughs> this is, uh, this will be going at the end of the next video as opposed to the beginning of it. And I'll just describe it to you guys when we start off. These are all lower level creatures, technically, to us. But mutants are still difficult. Ooh, a two hit mutant is very difficult. Look at look at it. Look at its portrait. That looks amazing to me. Oop, if this actually sticks on me. We were in lots of trouble because our dodge and evasion go away. Hmm. I don't like the dogs at all. Just kill all of them immediately. Try to get away. Oh, this was a kind of a bad spot to be. Let's put it on our shield. It might absorb some of the spit that will come our way. Okay. Tim, what are you doing? You got to keep moving. You don't have uncanny dodge ready, and they can kill you, and they will easily do so if they decide to want to walk up and just smack you with their claws. Thankfully, it looks like even though they don't take much damage from it, they still don't like fire. All right. We'll get a chance to see what items it drops after we hopefully survive this. Oh, that was a lot of misses. I think I missed every single one of those. Hello, mutants. Still worth 77 experience points also, these things. Okay, are we done? Kinda done. Oh, no, we're not done. We have more dogs. And they saw us. Oh, and we have a mutant. I don't think it can reach me and swing, or if it can, it can only do so once. Yeah, you have to kill all the mutants in this place once you once you start killing some of them. Mm, we're immune to fire. We can just run up and kill you. And your friend. And and your friend. Alright. I guess while we're here, 
since we came all this way, we will also uh, on screen chatting to Mr. Pear. Oops. And see if indeed we can get him, we can convince him to go to Chort. I think he mentioned that he's never aged. I think he mentioned that he never got sick. Oh, another mutant. Well, we're just gonna wait here for a little bit longer. Look at all that freaking acid everywhere, too. And of course, I want to search the corpses, but I'll do that on the way out. Alright, let's see. How's our weapon? What could we use? A small repair? We don't have a small repair. Okay. Let's go, mutant. Right across all the acid. Good critical. 423 damage. That's a decent amount for us. Okay. Oh, the eye the item. We'll take a we'll take a peek at it. I believe you can get a three point eye eye from the two headed mutant. It'll still be on its course when you walk back over there. Let's talk with Pear first. Assuming he's still here. And he is. Hello, what? Still scavenging here. Don't step on any of my mines. I just replanted them. Why do you still live here among this junk of mutants? This is my home. This is where I lived and worked all my life. And this is where I'll die someday, probably. What? You think living with mutants is dangerous? Living anywhere is dangerous. At least I know where the danger lies in this place and how to avoid it. Okay, so that's a no. So we can't convince him. But we probably can pick his pocket. Doesn't mind us walking in as long as we're not stealing anything from his stuff. This stuff being all the things lying around his home. We'll take his adrenaline shot. He can keep all his food. I don't think I tried to pick his pocket last time I was here. Okay, so information learned. Let's go take a look and see if we can get that Adi item. And most of the acid is also gone. Oh man, I forgot I left a bunch of acid glands on that poor girl. <laughs> I guess we're gonna give her some more as I clean up this mess in case I have to come back here a second time. Oh, was that the... No, I don't think that was the mutant. Mutant was right here. And there it is. Acid Cyclopean Eye. The blind eye still twitches from time to time, oozing corrosive acid. Wow! That's a five-point Adi item. That is worth coming back here and looking for that thing to spawn if you're playing Adi mode. Absolutely. Not so much on Classic. And we don't need any of this acid. We can't throw it effectively because we don't have any throwing. We don't need any of the acid dogs bits. All right. All right, viewer. So thank you guys once again for watching this. Hope it was entertaining. And I will see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.